Hello. So I thought I may as well move on to Prime Minister number 37. Uh, compared to David Lloyd George, uh, the next Prime Minister most people have never heard of, and that's actually how he is known. He's known as the unknown Prime Minister. Uh, Andrew Bonner Law, who was more often simply called Bonner Law. Um, he did come from an unusual background, though. Uh, he was the only Prime Minister to be born outside the United Kingdom. He was born in Rexton, New Brunswick, which is now Canada. And he, oh, that was of Ulster Scots descent. Um, so that gives me some level of personal interest. I'm from Northern Ireland, so this is the only Ulsterman, arguably, to have been in number 10. Uh, that gives me some personal interest. He was a Conservative, and he broke away from Lloyd George's Liberal Party, Liberal Coalition, um, which, of course, brought the end of the Lloyd George government. But really, compared to Lloyd George, he's uh, a very little known figure. And he was in, only in office for less than a year. In fact, to be precise, I think it was 220, 211 days. That makes him the shortest serving Prime Minister of the 20th century and one of the shortest ever, I believe the third shortest after George Canning and Viscount Godric. Um, so there isn't a great deal to say about Andrew Bonner Law, but uh, I'll just read from the Downing Street website. Some of the events that were ongoing during Lloyd George's final years were also ongoing at this time. For example, the Irish Civil War, uh, Michael Collins had been assassinated in 1922. And to give you some other context about that time, the Russian Civil War was ongoing. So, uh, although his term isn't particularly well remembered, or the world was still quite a turbulent place. So this is from um, uh, the 10 Downing Street website. If I am a great man, then a good many great men of history are frauds. He worked as a boy in his father's small holding, and at the age of 12 went to live with his late mother's cousins, who were rich Glaswegian merchant bankers in Scotland. He was born in 1858, so that's uh, five years before Lord George. He did work for the family bank while attending university night classes, which gave him an interest in politics and debating. At 27, he was making his fortune as an iron merchant, but did not live extravagantly having simple tastes. With an inheritance that gave him financial independence, Bonner Law entered politics. In 1900, he was elected Conservative MP for Glasgow Blackfriars. That's the same year, by the way, that Churchill was first elected. He had a reputation for honesty and fearlessness and was well regarded as an effective speaker. These qualities would promote him to parliamentary secretary to the Board of Trade. I've actually seen one uh, piece of silent footage which shows him speaking and it does look like he's addressing quite a large crowd, so he clearly had some oratorical skill. He'd also seen the 1906 Liberal landslide general election, but he returned to represent Dulwich following a by-election later the same year. Though hit hard by the death of his wife, he continued his political career and won the Conservative Party leadership in 1911 as a compromise candidate. At the outbreak of war, he offered the government the support of the Conservatives in the coalition. Working closely with the Liberals caused Bonner Law to admire David Lloyd George to such a degree that he even declined the premiership in favour of Lloyd George's appointment. That's quite incredible. He was given senior positions in Lloyd George's new war cabinet. His promotion reflected the great mutual trust between both leaders. So I guess we could say something like a Cameron Clegg situation there, except on this occasion it was born in law who was a junior partner. The coalition was re-elected by a landslide following the armistice. Born in law had lost his two eldest sons in the war and his health deteriorated. To recover, he resigned. That's a point actually uh, I think it's worth mentioning. We often see World War One as a working class war, and it is true that a lot of young working class lads were killed. But I don't think we should overlook the fact that men from all generations suffered, and there were a lot of young um, privileged men who also died in the trenches. So let's not gloss that over. I mean, a lot. Of, this is truly a war where everyone suffered, including politicians. As many statesmen of the day lost their sons, for example. So that's something that is worth noting out. Uh, Point you might should say. Um, excuse me. Um, at the time, many leading Conservatives were so charmed by Lord George that they were considering leaving the Conservatives to join a new party Lord George is planning. Law made a decisive and stimulating speech at the Conservative Carlton Club, which changed their minds and saved the Conservative Party. He persuaded the Conservatives to end their coalition work as an independent party. Conservative withdrawal forced Lord George to resign, and the King then invited Bonner Law 
after forming New Year's administration in 1922. Law's tra Tranquility Manifesto was an attempt to allow Britain to recover from war damage. Law elected he lasted just 209 days in office. He resigned in May 1923 due to ill health and died of throat cancer six months later. Um, so he died in 1923 at the age of 70, 70, excuse me, um, 65. So he was one of our older prime ministers. Um, he had somewhat of a similar appearance to Lloyd George, similar moustache, except more normal hair, so to speak. Um, quite typical, rigid looking 1920s man. There is actually, believe it or not, a few videos available of uh, Boner Law. One historic event was the first ever recorded um, cabinet meeting by British Pathé. And it basically introduces him and his cabinet sitting under the portrait of Pitt, but they don't say which Pitt. I assume that would be Pitt the Younger. Um, there isn't really a great deal to say about Bonner Law because not a great deal happened in his time in office. Um, in fact, there's nothing even in the in the Downing Street website mentioning legislation or anything like that. I'm sure something would have happened in those 10 months or so. I'm sure there must have been some sort of legislation, but nothing that stands out. Um, he was, however, leader of the Conservative Party for a very long time, from 1911 to 21. So that's some 10 years. So that in itself is worth pointing out. Um, like I said, there's not a great deal that could be said about his premiership. There's not a great deal happened within it. Um, so that is our 37th Prime Minister, Andrew Bonner Law, or Bonner Law, as he's more commonly known. 